Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. I've got a 1 versus 1 on Loki for you today. And if you're wondering why there's been so many 1 versus 1 replays recently, it's because the team games that have been sent in to me are uncastable in a variety of forms, whether that be desyncs or corrupted replays or replays that really didn't fit the bill for an entertaining cast. I've watched a bunch of them, I've enjoyed quite a few on my own that you guys have sent me, but I just haven't been able to make casts of them. However, this is an amazing 1 vs 1 replay, I have previewed it so I kind of know what's going on. It's between Calvarox at 1931 and Voodoo at 1999 ladder rank, about as evenly matched as you can ask for, both of them going Siren. So we're going to enjoy this game today. If you want to see more team games, send me some replays. It doesn't even have to be your replay. If you have heard of a good one or you have seen one that took place, shoot that replay over to me. Attach the replay file to the email link in the description. That is the best way to get it to me and I would be more than happy to look at it for you. Let's go ahead and dive into this without any further ado. Calvarox, as aforementioned, he is in the north corner as Cyber and it looks like he's got two land factories and an air factory. The air factory is in the works before the land factory it looks like. <clears throat> On the south side, Voodoo has not got very much of a build queue quite yet, but we will see what develops. He's got quite a few PGens going on, followed by an Air Factory. That is a total of eight PGens, one more than it's normal, and he is laying down mexes and expanding with his early engineers. Calvarox is doing more of the kind of thing that I typically see from people where we see a couple of engineers shoot out to the side, grab that reclaim, and that is the power boost that you get in place of the PGens. We also see a fair amount of manual reclaim orders placed all the way down that cliff face, sucking up all of those little rocks that lend themselves to speeding up your early build. Voodoo not laying those in, so I'm not sure if he is a little bit out of it or if he has not played that much on Loki. I find that hard to believe seeing as he is a 2k rated ladder player. He just has a very different me method of going about this. We'll have to see how it works for him as things develop. You'll have to pardon me killing my mic now and again, allergy season has set in. And so if I sound a little nasally and cough every now and then, that is why. Calvarox, as I mentioned just a few minutes ago, he is building eight PGens, the same as Voodoo, but he is also grabbing that little bit of manual reclaim and the attack move order. So he's going to be able to expand with those engineers. That'll work quite nicely for him and that manual reclaim there. Let's check how much that picked up for him. 250-ish reclaim, and that is still going up very, very slowly. Voodoo, on the other hand, zero and zero. So he is not bothering to do any reclaim whatsoever at the beginning of this game, and that is just a weird one to see. It goes to show you that you don't necessarily have to have perfect playing patterns to achieve a rank such as that. We've got second air factory going down for Voodoo, second air factory or Calvarox. Calvarox immediately rolling into that land factory after those additional two P-Gens. And we do have a Mantis at the top end that's going to keep a careful, watchful eye on that little engineer up there that is expanding to the left. Hopefully it will not get picked off by any labs that might have been headed through, but obviously Voodoo is not taking an aggressive early stance. The third factory is down for Voodoo. It is land as well as the fourth. And we've got a scout and an interceptor out for him. And it looks like Calvarox is laying in some more land factories and PGens with an engineer. His ACU, though, is headed out into the wide world to find its way, find himself, see what he can do out there in the big blue. Actually, this is the big green because, uh, well, I don't know. I suppose it would still be blue if it's a water-based planet. Who really knows? Interceptor meeting up with a scout there, not quite going to get it, but is going to loop back around and try. Nope, too speedy. It is going to get across and scout gives some much needed intel to Calvarox. As you always want to see what your opponent has. You can gauge how much land spam is coming and a variety of other things by that little scout. Voodoo has also gotten one across to Calvarox. Now, there is an engineer expanding down here for Voodoo. Usually this map looks kind of like a mirror image because the there's not a split down the middle 50-50 map control situation here. Usually you'll end up with stopping here. The right side player will typically get this plateau unless something weird happens. And it just kind of sprawls out in a weird shape. In the middle, these are actually indestructible wall segments. <clears throat> so units going through the middle are not that great. Because they all have to pack up and go through this little bitty gap in the wall. 
and that is not very efficient at all. So you actually move units quicker going around the outside edges. Not to say you cannot go through the middle, but it's just not that easy. Two Mantis closing in on that expansion here. That's going to eliminate this position quite easily. A couple of scouts moving in and a slow trickle of units. That's also one good thing on this pass. If you park your, a uh, your ACU right here and you have easy access to some overcharges, you can actually overcharge units as they move through and destroy a huge number of them, actually. The, to the point where you would wonder why anyone would send units through the wall. But then again, if there's nothing there to guard it, then I suppose you can't do that. So Calvarox is going to lock down a fairly early lead in land control, knock out that expansion. He's not going to be able to claim it for him his own, but he is going to secure it with some Mantis. And then we have the four mass extractors going down here with a pair of engineers. If he queues up a few land factories down there, he'll have a base of operations on the other side of the water. <clears throat> It'll work out really, really well for him. On the north side, he is actually going to get a raid in, too. If he can get that engineer before that land factory goes down, it will take a long, long time for Voodoo to re-expand to that section. And Voodoo did not even claim his hydropower plant there. That is very, very odd. He is, however, going to be able to ram this group of tanks up into this area. There is a point defense going down. Looks like Calvarox will be able to get that in position before the Mantis make it in. They are scuttling on their way in, but there's the auto gun, and wall section is going down to guard it from attack. That is going to be a loss for Voodoo as all of his units get stopped by the combination of that point defense and a couple of tanks from Calvarox. Looks like he is starting to get his numbers up on that spam. We've got five factories, six, a seventh thought about, but not completed. So he does have a respectable stream of units headed down there, and it looks like he's sending his commander up to secure this expansion, which actually has a point defense going down in it as well. It is equipped with radar and it does have a few units here and there. How on earth is Calvarox not seeing that? It is on radar. He is not sending his Mantis up to kill it. That seems like an odd slip up there. Hopefully he'll get that before the factory goes down, because like I said, if that factory goes down, this will be much harder to get rid of. And the factory is up. Here come the Mantis. I kill that engineer. Mantis coming out of the factory, but streaming one at a time into a clump of four Mantis. Not going to work out very well for him. He was going to try to skirt out to the side, I think, and use the factory for a meat shield. He is going to successfully kill one Mantis, so now we're going to have a 2v1 situation here with the firepower. Maybe that will actually work out for him. If he can get three or four out, he will actually be able to secure that. Looks like Calvarox is headed down towards the south side. Going to try to beat back this group that Voodoo is sending over to the right. That is going to be enough to secure this. He's got Medusas in the mix, so he's going to be able to eliminate that point defense. No problem whatsoever. Calvarox reconsidering that point defense build and is instead running away with his engineers. Actually, if he were to run out into the middle or across the water, he would be able to preserve that build power just in case he's able to re-expand. You don't want to lose all of your engineers, but it appears that he may. We'll just have to see how that works out for him. Voodoo was able to get that rid of that engineer and point defense. He's now going to eliminate the mass extractors and start claiming that area for himself. You can see he split off a fairly good portion of his spam to come up and assist the ACU. He was able to eliminate that threat, and now he's got engineers coming out. So we're getting back closer-ish to 50-50 map control. It looks like it's actually favoring Voodoo by just a little bit now. Calvarox, let's take a look at the Ecos here. He's got two T2 mass extractors. Is it only two? It is only two. He has got 84 mass per tick income, but that is counting reclaim and is fluctuating wildly with power stall. So let's not take that at face value. 36 for Calvarox. We'll just wait, or for Voodoo rather. We'll just wait for a minute and see what Calvarox settles down to. Over on the left hand side, this little. Lonely Mantis, a smoking heap compared to what it is supposed to be. He's going to try to make a last-ditch effort against this expansion. Actually, it would have been... Yeah, he's going to stop right there, kill off a couple of engineers, and uh, is actually going to be useful one more time. He's sitting there on 62 health. Too bad he couldn't pick up one more kill. The veterans, he probably would have let it survive and kill another Mantis, but eh, then again, maybe not. The rocks are there. Calvarox not reclaiming his rocks. I am 
kind of astounded by some of the gameplay choices going on here. This is almost looking like the type of game that I would play with all of my failures. It's kind of weird, honestly. Voodoo is going to meet that small group of Mantis and a Rhino. Retreating with the T2 in the face of that commander, that is the wise thing to do because unless you have an absolute mob of T2 units, one or two easily dies to an overcharge. You do not want to expend that mass on a totally wasted effort. It looks like uh, we do have one T2 factory anyway, but it is upgrading to a T3. Calvarox is going to straight up make the jump to T3 and try to get back some of this map control. There is a T2 HQ down for Voodoo, who has also made the move. Same exact thing, jumping straight to T3, barely producing any T2 tanks, if any. That is... Really awesome, actually. I've never seen a double T3 jump, although Loki is kind of prime territory for that play. We've got 49 steady mass income plus reclaim, 5,000 in the bag for Calvarox, and we've got 47 sitting on just a little bit higher income for Voodoo. You can see the power drain from that overcharge as he gets rid of that T2 unit. Unit's closing in. And there's the first Loyalist out of the factory. The same thing kind of applies here. You gotta get around the ACU because if you lose your T3 units to overcharges, all of that mass investment on the shiny T3 HQ is a complete and utter waste. It looks like Calvarox is gonna move up and try to do some damage to this T1 force. He has a severely inferior number of units. There are a couple of T2 hiding in there. We'll just have to see if he can hold ground or make headway there. Voodoo doing a fantastic job of closing in, killing off two mexes. Point Vets going down for Calvarox. So the Medusas are going to pause just a little in an effort to kill those Point Vets, not lose too many Mantis. And that's going to give a little time for these couple of Loyalists to move up from the back end and try to eliminate that task force. Looks like those mechs were grabbed and Voodoo is running literally for the hills as he sees all of that T3 coming out of the factories. You do not want to have your ACU that close to a bunch of T3 units because while you can deal with one or two, maybe three or four, with some overcharges, once you start getting clumps like this, where you have four T3s plus a bunch of Mantis and the number of Loyalists goes up as the game goes on, then you're gonna have major, major issues at keeping your ACU alive. Tiny little task force moving in to the left side. Looks like Voodoo does finally have a group of three Loyalists in one place that is going to be able to handle most of this that's oncoming. And Calvarox is grouping up for an assault to finally take over this south expansion. Easily colliding with all of those units, Loyalists laying waste to those T1s. They do a fantastic job, high fire rate. They're not the absolute best on damage but they do a very nice job of eliminating the lower tiered units. Bricks obviously are stronger, but you cannot beat the speed and the agility of a Loyalist as far as shifting around the map and dealing with threats wherever they may arise. We've still got four Loyalists online here. There was one for Voodoo, but one is not enough. All of those units are gonna get mopped up yet again, and engineers are moving in to grab mass extractors, reclaim, and all in all, give Calvarox a little leg up. You know, you can stand to lose some map control if you make a recovery like this one because you're going to be able to reclaim everything as you move across the map. I love the run by there. Three Loyalists did make it by the ACU. There's a bunch of Loyalists moving south to intercept, but nope, those are actually headed due west, and those three Loyalists are going to be able to skirt and move down. A little bit of an air engagement there. Voodoo taking air control. Well, I don't know. There are some interceptors over here. It looks like they have roughly even numbers, actually. And Loyalist moving to the left. So Calvarox now in control of almost exactly half of the map. He's got his entire plateau, plateau in the red. And Voodoo has his entire plateau in the blue. Although he does have a couple of mass extractors missing in spots. T2 Mexico went down there. That is a bit of an exceptional loss. A lot of times all of these... Uh, 
mass extractors on the outside edges are going to be T1, so when you lose them, you know, you rebuild them 18 seconds, they pay for themselves. When you lose those T2 mechs, it does take a fair bit more to recover. This is kind of where you have to make a judgment call, because while it's more efficient by a long shot to upgrade a T1 to a T2, and even to cap a T2 mechs, when you make the choice to upgrade to a T3, you kind of have to guess, well, is upgrading this far-flung mass extractor going to be safe? Because it could be a wasted investment. There's an air engagement. Could be a wasted investment if you then lose that T2 mass extractor within a couple of minutes. So in that case, it would have actually been better to upgrade a T3 mechs in a safe area. Just kind of something you have to decide on the fly. That's probably... One of the more often asked questions that I get, uh, people wondering, so what order should I upgrade my mass extractors in? And the answer to that is, as far as efficiency goes, all T1 claimed, all T2 upgraded, all T2 capped, and then all T3. But when you're also vying for map control, obviously you don't want a T3 and mechs way out in the boondocks. Loyalist standing off versus a single solitary break that is now not so solitary since it's gotten joined by a companion. Those are going to be able to kite the Loyalists and deal damage without taking any. And that's going to eliminate at least one or two Mantis, or not Mantis, Loyalists from that group. It's frustrating to see when something like that happens. I hate it when I get outranged. I really, really do. Loyalists obviously are faster. They're going to be, over, be able to overtake Bricks, but you can't really count on that when you got a backing force like this one. Voodoo making the jump to Bricks is the logical response because once you're able to field a fairly good number of units in a variety of places love the gunship harassment as well that son of a gun's got three kills on it once you're able to consistently maintain groups of units in places it's better to have the strong presence of a brick rather than the reactive presence of a loyalist because once you have clumps like this fighting in centralized locations, you don't need to be able to run out and protect your expansions anymore. But he does have a couple of bricks headed up that way as well. Calvarox maintaining his Loyalist build. I don't see any bricks at all for him quite yet. He's still cranking out those Loyalists at a furious pace, and he is still making use of them very, very well because he is still hitting all of the spots left wide open by Voodoo. Voodoo down to 61 mass per tick and Calvarox up to 80. 11,000 reclaim under the belt of Calvarox and 10,000 for Voodoo. So still kind of hanging out neck and neck there. Two gunships out there harassing those units. You know, they don't put out that much damage, but when they're unopposed and able to hit those units for as long as they want, it does rack up over time. I'm anxious to see whether these can actually make it into the base and do a significant amount of damage. Loyalists out front. Calvarox is getting an upgrade there. That is probably stealth. He already has gun. It's going to be interesting to see because going gun comm, <clears throat> going gun comm versus a group of units that size is asking for a speedy death because there's just so much damage contained in that group. Calvarox maintaining a significant margin on his air control. Voodoo just does not have anywhere near the amount of interceptors that Calvarox does. Brick's easily going to dispatch that T1 point defense from range. Calvarox with the stealth and the gun upgrade. So, that's going to help him some. While there's an air scout, obviously all the units will be able to shoot. And flying gunships over flak. Good job, good job. That banger is going to be a great help there, saving that mass extractor. The stealth is going to let the ACU overcharge without being hit by any of these units. The problem with that is with loyalists on the front line, they're going to be able to overtake the ACU so quickly that the stealth may not actually matter. So we're going to have to see how this works out. Calvarox kind of skirting to the edge, stay near the water just in case I have to run. There's the overcharge, killing two. Loyalists in the back will be able to back up the commander should something go horribly, horribly wrong. Run blocker, collide with the units, keep them off the ACU. Calvarox diving in again for another overcharge, but you gotta be careful. Stay out of range, stay out where your stealth actually helps you. Moving up a little bit, just creep your way in. Impressive micro from Calvarox dealing with all of those units. That was actually a 
relatively superior force and he has managed to eliminate that advantage with a handful of well-placed overcharges. Come on, buddy. There we go. Two loyalists and a brick with one overcharge. And he's got loyalists disrupting the chain of units flowing in. He's going to be able to deal with that very, very well. More loyalists up in the left-hand side. Wiped out all of that up there. And Calvarox is actually sitting very, very nicely atop a reasonable map advantage and a little bit of an economy advantage as well. 2k power income or right thereabouts. 12k in the bag on reclaim and 75 mass per tick reliable income. Well, looky there, looky there. There's a rhino. That actually got dropped over there by that transport. Saw it and did not have a second to comment on it at that particular time. 61 mass per tick for Voodoo and 12,000 reclaim as well. So neck and neck on that front. There's more engineers being dropped. That's going to help fill in those mass extractors. Maybe get a radar and a factory up to secure that location. We now have a fresh flow of units moving in towards Calvarox's ACU. And this is actually not good at all because he is getting his ACU a long ways away from the water. There's that T3 P gen going down. We may actually see T3 air momentarily from Calvarox, or in a moment. I don't think that was a correct English. Calvarox moving in on these units. The bricks in the back are what worry me. These are still 100% loyalists in this mix. The bricks are going to be significantly stronger, able to shred those from a distance. Calvarox getting in. Four bricks is more than enough to kill an ACU. If you kite properly, you have intel. Um, the damage, like I said, the damage is just so high. It comes in so fast. It's about 1,500 damage for four bricks, which rips through 12k incredibly quickly two bricks going down still have two alive and a third moving in a fresh full hp brick only four loyalists remaining so that many bricks will win brick eliminating two loyalists right there with the help of a rhino did lose a couple of mass extractors but it's okay he will regain that and then voodoo was able to resecure the north side with a handful of loyalists t2 gunships are the item of the day for Calvarox. He has had them out in quite a few little corners of the map. Currently has six or so. Seven, actually. Harassing these loyalists on the north side. Pushing those back. Bricks hitting up Calvarox. He has gained another vet off of another overcharge. But he is rapidly losing health versus those two bricks. You see what I'm talking about, about the damage adding up. Below 6,000, below 5,000. Looks like he forgot about his ACU there for a second. Below four, and those two bricks still closing in. We've got three bricks and two loyalists, though. That is going to deflect the rest of that damage. Galvarox escaping with about 3,600. And, haha, <laughs> AA brick. Well, actually, not that much. Is going to hit that hydro up and eliminate that T2 mass extractor as well. So Voodoo doing a phenomenal job of just keeping on harassing, dropping units different places, doing everything he can to disrupt the economy and unit flow of Calvarox. And now we actually see Voodoo taking the lead in income. He is sitting on 81 mass per tick, reliable stream, and 14,600 on reclaim. That is an air engagement right there. Quite a few interceptors. Calvarox sitting on a 117, I think. Is that 117? I think so. He is getting a lot of reclaim from down here, and it makes it hard to tell. 18,000, almost 19,000 reclaim, so a significant mass advantage. The air fight was looking extremely good for Calvarox, but now he is kind of hovering his interceptors over a flak which, as we all know, is a horrible, horrible idea. He needs to pull all of those units back and preserve his lead on production. Although, he's not actually producing at the moment. There's a Monkey Lord started. Well, this is going to be interesting. Because, well, I guess he's actually sitting fairly well. He does have a lack of mass. He's down to around 60 per tick. I just saw the real number showing through. And he's lost a bunch of mass extractors and quite a bit of territory. But I think he does have enough units to hold it until he gets that Monkey Lord up. Voodoo doing a fantastic job of resecuring map control. But the question is, can he get enough bricks in one place 
to stop that Monkey Lord, especially considering the fact that Calvarox has got a pretty substantial amount of T3 on the map. Four bricks against five, six bricks and three loyalists. I think we all know who's going to win in that situation. I love that brick sitting there. He's kind of chilling out in the water, waiting for his moment. He's got his head poking out. <laughs> Actually, pretty shallow water there. Well, it's probably hundreds of feet deep by Earth standards, but these units are huge. Got to speak relatively. All right. Calvarox regaining territory on the north side. You loyalists pushing over to the left, and I am basically just waiting on this Monkey Lord to get done. Calvarox maxing out, pushing his economy to the limit. 28,000 reclaimed. That was a lot of reclaimed very quickly. Voodoo still sitting on 15 and stagnant. This engagement, where he used his commander to overcharge to death a substantial group of T3 and then sustain his hold on this corner of the map and reclaim it. I think that's pretty much one in the game. The rest of this was all evenly matched back and forth, jib and jab, but honestly, once that Monkey Lord comes up, I just don't think Voodoo is going to be able to stop it. Has he even scouted it? That's the real question here. He has not. Looking like me with that lack of intel. Alvarox is going to close here. Got about seven loyalists and five bricks versus seven, eight bricks. I think it's still going to favor Calvarox, especially with the loyalists moving in, using their stun effect on a couple of those bricks. Even when they do die, they take a couple of units with them. You can't deal damage, and you take a lot of damage when you're in that stance. And that is that. Hold secured on the south side. I think Calvi is going to take this. Gonna bump the speed up and see where that Monkey Lord goes. Voodoo is going to realize that something is horribly, horribly wrong in just a moment here. He just does not have anything up to deal with that. It is sad, sad to see. This reminds me of mistakes that I make because I had a game on Loki, actually, in the latter stream, where I thought I had a win and I basically petered out. I just didn't advance past a certain point. And it looks kind of like Voodoo went for the Brick Spam and thought the Brick Spam was going to win everything for him. And he never really went past that to securing air control and doing something extra, to going for a T4, to this, that, and the other thing that he could have done. He just kind of relied 100% on Brick Spam. And I think he just maybe played a little reactively is all the difference that was here. It was a very even game up until this Monkey Lord came in. Once Calvarox sank his teeth into that reclaim, got all this in hand, he, he is just going to steamroll all the way back into the base. The only hope Calvarox has got is he does have a substantial lead in air. If he's able to produce enough bombers, he might be able to kill that Monkey Lord. He does have a few bricks left, but the Monkey Lord is vetting. So, oh, he's actually moving across. Calvarox did get T3 air up. But there's enough interceptors here. He's actually going to kill the ASF and lock that factory with inties only. Monkey Lord moving into the base. T1 Bomber coming out for some kamikaze runs. That's not going to work versus the Monkey Lord. Monkey Lord has its own anti-air that can easily drop T1 Bombers unless they're in huge numbers. Monkey Lord plowing through the base. Looks like Voodoo is going to move in. Maybe try to overcharge a couple of times, but whether he overcharges... Or he just meets his end. That is GG, folks. Nothing he can do against that rampage. Boom! Goes the dynamite. Alrighty, that is going to wrap up that game on Loki. That is pretty much the intensity of ladder. Sometimes there's not a whole lot of specialty plays. But you got to execute well, execute correctly. And I enjoy watching these particular types of replays because right now I'm trying to improve my ladder game. It has its hits and misses, as you guys have seen if you watch the streams. But yeah, I like watching these because I can get build order tips. I can get play tips from them. Hopefully you guys are learning something as well. Okay, well, for coming off of a very long break and not being up to speed on my subcom and all that kind of thing, I think that cast went reasonably well. Again, I apologize if there were some cutouts for coughing and some things missed. I am still feeling a bit muddy. 
But anyway, we're going to get back on track. There is another cast headed your way either Thursday or Friday. I'm not particularly sure which. And then, of course, the live stream on Saturday. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys over there.